In our news bulletin for this evening, Department of Agriculture looks to implement a new user pay system for the use of the FAO test kitchen. Tourism career options are promoted at the new high school. Shuttle bus run officially launched this week to cater for tourist public transportation needs. Last weekend's final round of pool games builds up towards Kilikiki finals this coming weekend. Local processors could be looking at a new user pay arrangement for the use of the Food and Agriculture Organization funded test kitchen at the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. The test kitchen opened just over a year ago as a central point for trials and experimentation for value-added products using agricultural products with the hope of developing new products for the local market and potential export. Workshops have been facilitated by FAO and DAF to get locals thinking of ways to add value to the local resources as an alternative to some imported products. The department is looking at possibly forming a local processes network and identifying a fair system where payment could be made on a six-monthly basis. At a processes meeting in November of last year, it was agreed that a rate of $100 every six months would be applied. This user pay system was originally factored into the project to be directed towards the upkeep and main expense for power and gas used. Additional support is available where DEF can assist with the development of appropriate packaging and labeling to ensure the product is appealing to the consumer. Some products that have been developed include banana chips, jams, chutney, frozen taro, tsukihi, ice cream and more. The facility is still open to local processors, but the department is working on a schedule for the ongoing use of this test kitchen. Anyone interested in using the kitchen are encouraged to contact the Department of Agriculture. Students at Newey High School are being challenged to dream, explore and discover a career in tourism. The tourism certificate offered to students started last year and now into its second year it has been gaining some momentum. Government's economic drive to boost the tourism industry has seen this initiative supported by the Newey Chamber of Commerce, Newey Tourism, the Department of Education as well as local businesses on the island. A Tourism Careers Expo at the Newer High School Multipurpose Hall two weeks ago opened up the opportunity for about 10 local businesses to set up their booth displays. Newer Chamber of Commerce, Education and Communications Officer Roxathina Falabio has spent the better half of the past two years promoting private sector development and tourism within the school as well as teaching the tourism certificate. The students are encouraged to develop their own uh, there's a, a component in the course where they have to develop their own research about the work roles in tourism that they would be interested in undertaking in the future. Um, we've been on field trips, which is an opportunity for them to see real people at work in tourism. Uh, we've done expos, we've been on um, research trips where they just get the chance to talk to people who are in tourism, uh, which is a component as well in the course where they have to find out about someone in tourism on the island that they'd like to either imitate or learn something from for their future careers. So they've been real interactive and that's uh, one of the main reasons why the, um, the school would like to encourage the students to take part in the course. This year the change was we had a lot more support from our business community. All those who are in tourism um, who have supported the expo last year, they came back but uh, we were able to get a few more new businesses on this year and they were the ones who came on and really went above and beyond my own expectations. The classic example would be um, Sina Kumatsavai. They came and they actually set up a, a makeshift bedroom and a restaurant and they had their different um, employees from different departments from Matavai demonstrating what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. The other um, ones would be the massage station. Last year was a, um, I just kind of threw it all together and I've I was lucky to find a teacher at the school who was also a massage therapist. But this year I found a business who does that, and they came in and, and did that part of the expo. Um, the other one was the nails. I couldn't find anyone last year because that's another side of tourism. Um, and then this year Tropical Treats was, was good enough to donate their time and their supplies to do that expo. So 
it was just the buy-in from our community this time around was a lot, a lot better than the first time. The support from the private sector has helped enhance the activities and opportunities in a growing industry. We spoke to some of the students taking the certificate to find out what made them interested in tourism, what they have learned about tourism in Niue and New Zealand, as well as their outlook for the future. I took tourism because uh, I wanted to um, learn more and you know. To be honest, I want um, only took this one because I um, really like traveling to different countries, learn more from overseas and that. Niue is a smaller nation than New Zealand, and well, obviously, Niue's um, tourist population is way lesser than New Zealand, so. Um, That'll be like one of the biggest differences, and also in the um, New Zealand, their tourism industry, they have more um, activities and more um, things that will attract the tourists. As for New where we have, oh, we have, all right, like our tourist activities, they are right to um, accommodate our our tourists, but then we can also have other things that will attract more. I want to take up um, a career in events organizing. Like I enjoy the responsibility of having to organize something for somebody else so they won't feel um, pressured to do the event themselves. So I want to um, make it easier for them. And I just also find it really fun to work with others, you know. One component of the tourism certificate also requires students to take on the perspective of a tourist to experience New Zealand as a destination. Yes, that's a compulsory paper. They have to be able to demonstrate an understanding of New Zealand as a tourist destination. The other component is the Pacific Islands. So um, the reason for that trip in, in August is that the students will get a chance to experience New Zealand as a tourist. They will do things that tourists would do, which is sightseeing, like um, similar to Niue. They would sleep in tourist accommodations, um, use tourist transportation, all those things. It's the equivalent of if we were to do a, a Niue certificate in tourism, then we would have done the trip here. They would have experienced all of those things. Just because we're doing a New Zealand certificate in tourism, we have to do that component in New Zealand. So we found out last year that we're going and um, our biggest issue so far is the, um, our fundraising. We're, um, we've been trying to um, like um, think of ideas that will help us um, fundraise the money um, in time for our trip in, um, <clears throat> in August. And so far we've come up with quite a few, but uh, obviously we haven't really um, managed to put any of it to action. Well, we have, but then... Our fundraising hasn't really been successful since, like, we're all busy with our own um, tasks and, and yeah, we just need, like, help, like, financially, right? Our fundraising, um, it's pretty good, I reckon. Um, we raised, we should raise, like, a lot of money this year. Um, we got raffles going on. Um, should be drawn on June 20th. Yep, yeah, got more um, fundraising coming up this past few months, especially the show day that's coming up, Hakupus. Despite the challenges, the group are 60% of the way there to achieving their set goal. They hope that with more community support, it will help them complete their certificate studies and plan for the trip that will help them reach for that dream job in the tourism industry. A shuttle bus run has officially been launched this week, operated through the scenic Matavai Resort. A tourist survey conducted a few years ago identified the lack of public transportation as one area that needed to be addressed, and this feedback was taken on board by the new tourism and new chamber of commerce. Since then, Scenic Matavai has taken the initiative to build this into their operations. The shuttle bus run in the afternoons will make stops at a number of accommodation providers and restaurants. The main accommodations that the shuttle bus will start from, Scenic Matavai Resort and on to Namukulu Cottages and Spa, Anaiki Pump Motel, Coral Gardens and Newer Backpackers in town. 
General Manager of Scenic Matavai, Simon Jackson, said that the shuttle is on trial and plans are in motion to get more accommodation providers to encourage their guests to utilise this alternative to get around and dine at other locations. That will also help prevent drink driving. Last night was the first trial of the shuttle bus that did not have many customers, but despite this, the shuttle bus will continue with the scheduled route to the different accommodations. This week will be an opportunity to test with a shuttle ticket costing $10 return and it is hoped that as tourists become more aware of the service that is on offer, they will be able to make use of the shuttle bus. The men's Kilikiki team's final round of pool games before the finals was held last Saturday. This year's competition continued with the two pool divisions. Pool A had Avaseli, Liku, Vaya, Hikutue, Tswapa and Hakupu. Pool B included Alofi, Makefu, Mutalo, Lakepa and Tamkotonga. On Saturday, four fields were busy and the mixed weather made for some surprising results. The Alofi cricket team went up against Mutalo on their home turf. Mutalo, Alofi bat first, scored a whopping 238 points. There was a brief break before Mudalo played catch-up and managed to score 245 runs with time and players left to spare. The Makefu team travelled to La Kappa to play against La Kappa. La Kappa bat first and scored a total of 227 runs. Makefu nearly caught up with 220 runs, but unfortunately they only just fell short, La Kappa claiming victory in that game. In Liku's village green, Liku bat first against Avaseli and scored a whopping 370 runs. Avaseli attempted to catch up on the score but ran out of players with a total of 205 runs and 20 minutes to spare. In the village green of Hakupu, Hakupu went up against Tuapa. Tuapa batting first with a total score of 293 points. Hakupu bats and tried to catch up to that score but came short with just 275 runs. Tuapa winning that match off. At the moment, the results are unclear for Pool A, as for Pool B, Mutalo is currently in the lead. The finals for the men's Kirikiki will be held this coming Saturday out on the pitch in Liku and Hakupu. Liku will be the venue for first and second placing, while Hakupu Field hosts games for third and fourth. The new Kirikiki Federation Committee are due to discuss details for the finals that have been scheduled for this coming weekend. And that concludes our news bulletin for this evening. Do join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.